my name is Thierry Bergé, I'm an associate at the International Institute for Environmental Development, IIED. I'm just going to give you a brief agenda for today's webinar and introduce the speakers. So, uh, Emily Pollack from IED uh, is a senior researcher in the Legal Tools team, uh, Natural Resources Group. Uh, the first speaker, Kuan Oppermann, is team leader at Malawi Outsin Sector Transformation Program. And our second speaker, Snowden, is Secretary of the Cotton Farmers Association of Malawi. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Emily Polak. Um, and as Thierry said, welcome to everyone very much to the second webinar in a series focused on sharing experiences of promoting and supporting legal empowerment of small-scale producers in commercial agriculture. Um, uh, so we've got a, a great diverse group here um, with lots more people joining, so that's great to see. Um, so I'll just briefly introduce today's seminar and then hand over to our speakers. Um, engagement in commercial agriculture, as we know, can present small-scale farmers and communities with opportunities to get local and global markets but many also face a whole raft of challenges in not only securing a fair price, but in securing the necessary resource base, sustaining production, or negotiating business relationships. And in global supply chains, we know risks and rewards are rarely distributed equitably. Empowering producers in commercial agriculture, EPIC, is an IIED-led initiative um, seeking to generate lessons on how rural producers, their associations, and their wider communities can best empower themselves to articulate their priorities, make informed choices, and negotiate effectively for equitable partnerships with progressive private sector actors in commercial agriculture. So EPIC is exploring the different ways producers are able to mobilize and overcome challenges in their commercial relations with other value chain actors. And that includes addressing challenges both upstream and downstream. And one mode of exploring these issues is through inviting practitioners from around the world with relevant experiences to critically reflect on and share their work, um, much more in a lesson sharing mode than a promotional way. Um, and to do this amongst the diverse group of practitioners from around the world, which is certainly what we have today. Today's event. Um, as Thierry mentioned, will share and debate the experiences of incentive-based contract farming in Malawi. Contract farming is not a new mode of procuring materials from raw materials direct from smallholders, but continues to gain currency. And yet evidence on the outcomes at the local level amongst farmers and their communities is hugely mixed, and instances of farmer indebtedness and other challenges have been well documented. And buyers continue to face challenges of side selling uh, amongst other things. So the incentive-based contract farming in Malawi was de developed by the Malawi Oilseed Sector Transformation Program as a way to move away from a system that focuses on sanctioning farmers uh, for non-compliance and side-selling to a more positive incentive-based approach. So it seems, an inter it seems interesting to hear about how this plays out in practice for different actors and what are some of the, the nuts and bolts of this approach. Um, and our speakers today will also discuss an experience of linking farmers to agricultural commodities exchanges and vice versa as a way to address both upstream and downstream challenges and with the potential to get farmers out of ties to particular buyers. And this may be helpful in contexts where farmers are being squeezed um, by monopolistic or oligopolistic players and behavior in the value chain. Um, and in this instance, it offers producers a number of systems for trading their produce based on transparent pricing mechanisms at a time and or price that is optimum for farmers. So it seems, again, interesting to hear some of the nuts and bolts of this um, and also the risks and opportunities it presents for different actors and how, how do these approaches look going forwards. So we hope that hearing from our two speakers on, on these experiences will stimulate many questions and comments for discussion to try and deepen our understanding of what lessons these approaches offer us both in Malawi and elsewhere. Um, and we hope that many of you participating will also be able to contribute insights from your own experiences, your thoughts, your reflections, and further questions for, for the speakers. 
um, to, to further broaden the range of insights and examples uh, we can share and how think about uh, what context-specific issues we have and what are lessons that can be shared between different spaces and geographies. So without saying any more, I'd like to hand over to uh, Kuan, to our first speaker, uh, to give his presentation. Uh, thank you, Emily. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, if the line is a little bit dodgy, I'm in rural uh, Bangladesh at the moment. <laughs> Not certain about how things will pan out in terms of internet connections. Um, uh, I'm the team leader of the uh, uh, MOST program. Uh, it was uh, conceived by DFRD and uh, contracted in September 2013. Uh, the, the program follows a market systems development approach and uh, is coming to an end now in November. Um, the program has been well received by the FID and uh, has had several successes and uh, far exceeded uh, the targets set by the by, by FID. I think key to the, the, the approach and, and the program's approach was to, to really look and assess uh, the particular market systems we were working in. We had a, a focus on oilseed crops. Um, and so we looked at uh, cotton, sesame, uh, groundnut, soybean, and sunflower, and really look at uh, determining why the market is not functioning in the interest of the poor, and what, what the underlying causes of uh, exclusion for the poor from these market systems was. Not looking at uh, symptoms that stem from it, but rather looking at what, what the, the fundamentals were. We initially conducted market systems analysis um, and initially focused on, on the cotton sector. And this is pretty much applicable to, to many uh, contract farming arrangements or the status quo of, of smallholders uh, around the world is that they have insufficient access to productivity enhancing inputs um, in the cotton sector. This is particularly around um, seed and, and crop protection products. Um, the financial issues around this in the sense that a lot of programs will try and look at some sort of financial arrangement to, to improve that access. But we felt that within the cotton sector, the, the best approach was to uh, get the cotton ginners to understand that the poor were an important part of their supply chain um, and install or, yeah, sorry, uh, to implement um, a contract farming arrangement that was to the benefit of both the cotton ginner who needed the volumes to come through, but then also to the, the cotton farmers who uh, were fundamental to, to the process. The cotton sector in Malawi, just to give the, the context, uh, had 10,000, or oh, it's got 250,000 tons of installed uh, capacity, um, and over the last few years, uh, the cotton Production has ranged from up to from a high of about 45,000 tons down to about two years ago about 8,000 tons of cotton. So um, it, it was a lot. Of, there's a lot of competition for the cotton. The, the market is relatively dysfunctional, and a lot of this stems from the fact that the cotton smallholders are not receiving the inputs that they need to participate in the market. Uh, the on, on the part of the cotton ginners. Uh, they, they were risk averse. There's a high degree of side selling. Uh, Coverage in the cotton sector would be around 30, 40% at best. Um, and as such, there was no incentive for the cotton gins to, to make that investment in, in their supply side um, and support the, the, uh, the smallholder farmers. They, they did, however, have uh, the capacity um, for looking at contract arrangements that work, worked well for both sides of the equation for the smallholders and for themselves. So the most uh, worked with the, the cotton gins and, and facilitated an approach where the uh, smallholders were uh, able to access productive inputs. Um, if they went through a process and they fulfilled their contractual arrangement, which is around the delivery of a certain volume of cotton, uh, they would be, in a sense, rewarded um, and in the following season, the uh, input package would increase as well as the incentives that applied um, to, to that particular cotton farmer. 
So it's a stepping process and graduation process. And as long as the smallholder um, complies with the contractual arrangements, um, they will continue to grow and continue to receive bigger and better incentives to, to remain in. The, the main area, um, and, and this is where uh, it was an interesting part that came out, is, is that for the system to, to work, the cotton gin, or the ginner who is procuring the cotton, needs to pay the market price um, at the particular time of purchase. Should they not um, pay the prevailing price, there's a strong likelihood that cotton uh, smallholders would side sell. So, in a sense, this uh, resulted in a fair price being paid to farmers, um, rather than we are buying cotton at a discount because we provided you with certain incentives or certain inputs at the beginning of the season. The cost of the incentives were not uh, discounted from the price. The price paid was per kilo of cotton in the, uh, on the prevailing uh, price that particular day, um, and no discounts, no cotton is supplied in lieu of uh, payments for the, incent uh, for the inputs. Um, and as such, every kilo of cotton that smallholder produced, uh, they, they got paid for. We, we added in, uh, further incentives in the, in the form of uh, drought input insurance, and essentially this insurance ensures that the, the cotton farmers are, are not left uh, with any residual debt. We also included, uh, in, included funeral expenses insurance um, as, a, as, let's say, a social benefit, but that's been particularly successful as, as a motivator to uh, smallholders to comply and uh, remain within the system. Uh, some of the challenges is what we're trying to get the companies to understand, particularly the gymnasts, uh, to understand the concept and make sure that that cascades down through all the people that are engaging at, at a smallholder level. Um, and we use various uh, tools to do this. We make little mini clips that can be sent out on WhatsApp uh, to explain the structure of the insurance or the package, um, explain to the farmers that in the first year that their package would be X and that if they performed the following year that there would be uh, added uh, incentives or added uh, inputs that are provided. Um, we, the key thing is also to get the uh, firms to understand that this is not a, a way of procuring uh, their, their feedstock or their commodity cheaply. This is around investing in a long-term supplier base that gives them a consistent volume and that they can plan around the volumes coming through their processing facility. So ideally, this sort of approach would have a two to three year window, but three, four years is probably better. Um, and in that time, the firm is then able to, uh, to, to really establish and expand their, their supply base. Uh, the firms benefit because they're making more money because they can plan ahead and receive the right quality and uh, uh, correct volumes. Of, uh, of commodity. We, we started recording on, uh, on cotton, started recording 95% of uh, repayments, now we're getting up to 97%. Um, and this is a complete uh, new paradigm within the cotton sector in, in, um, in, in, in Malawi. Um, the smallholders were able to participate in the market as they had now uh, access to the productive inputs. Uh, one of the key things is that their yields improved because they had access to foliar feed and, um, and, and various other inputs that, um, that, that they require to improve their yields. And it's now likely that the Cotton Council of Malawi will recommend this approach for the, the whole cotton sector um, as a way of building the market up to uh, its, its former levels. We took the, the key lessons out of this and worked in collaboration with the Malawi uh, agricultural Commodity Exchange, and, and really took out the parts about what, what is an incentive, what does a, a, a smallholder require in order to engage effectively in the market and uh, benefit from, uh, from that market. So with the, the Commodity Exchange, we established the Chutumba model. Um, and again, it, it worked on the same uh, key parameters as, as the um, cotton sector. 
improved uh, access to farm inputs, building a repayment history, and productivity in, uh, increasing. The private sector, uh, and by this I mean the input suppliers in, in terms of seed and inoculant in particular, found that there was a new channel to, to sell um, uh, to, to sell their, their products. Um, and as a result of that, we were prepared to take a certain amount of risk in, in the provision of those inputs, as well as provide an eight-month uh, period of credit. For the commodity exchange, it sort of introduced uh, smallholders to the services that they offered. Um, it increased the volumes that are traded across the platform. But one of the key things, one of the reasons we worked with the commodity exchange was that they were then able to, uh, we had a mechanism for price discovery. So again, the, the uh, remuneration or the, the payments to smallholders reflected the prevailing price at a particular time or in date. Um, as I say, the program is coming to a close in November. Um, we've done a short animation on the MIS program, which you can see uh, if you click on the hyperlink, you'll be able to see that. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, and welcome to my presentation. Um, my presentation mainly is to um, agree with QN. Indeed, in Malawi, we've got a 70 based contract farming. This is a um, an improvement of some other models that, that were tri tri tried before, uh, which failed. Um, uh, currently, uh, apart from those who are involved in the um, IB IBCF uh, arrangement, um, access to input in Malawi is still a very big challenge, and the, those farmers uh, on the ICB IBCF uh, were facing, facing the similar challenges. As you can see from my presentation and from what QN has said, uh, there are a few GINAs that are willing to invest in quarterly imports. Uh, some GINAs just uh, provide incomplete input packages. No financial institutions are uh, willing to finance cotton production in Malawi. So farmers are facing difficulties to access imports on time and the inputs that are available in the market are very expensive or poor quality and um, usually uh, long distances to access them. Um, the uh, benefit of uh, uh, IBCF that farmers are now enjoying are uh, uh, those farmers which are, which are on IBCF uh, have guaranteed source of inputs and they, have, they know that the, the inputs will be available, which is a very great relief. Um, there's also a guaranteed in, uh, quality of inputs because they know the, this farmer, the, the, the genus who are providing uh, the input to farmers uh, make sure that um, they, they get the high quality inputs. Uh, there's also an element of labor saving technology um, because in the in the package there's um, uh, help sites that are provided. Um, there's also a granted cotton seed market. As Kiran has said, uh, the general who are uh, facilitating the uh, uh, the IBCF they enter the market and they offer even better market, better prices because of the high competition. Uh, they don't count about the investment which they have, uh, they have given to the farmers. They offer competitive prices. Um, this year was a typical example. Uh, the company that is involved in this, Afrasian, was one of the best uh, price provider on the market. So uh, we have seen that those farmers are well, uh, on IBCF, uh, at least they have got increased income and their poverty levels are uh, reducing. Uh, QN has uh, contributed to the fact that loan repayment in Malawi um, hovers around 30%, but through IBCF uh, arrangement, um, the repayment rate is as high as 85%, 90%. Uh, one of the uh, benefits that um, uh, this uh, program uh, project has brought is uh, the issue of insurance. This is a very big incentive to both the farmer and um, uh, to, to, to the genus. And farmers are much are motivated because this uh, insurance package covers weather issues, weather, uh, weather index insurance. There's also funeral expense insurances. Um, which is some, a very good innovation, and uh, it gives a very big relief to farmers because Malawi sometimes is uh, experience a lot of um, maybe uh, flooding. Uh, at times, there's uh, uh, 
droughts which affect the crop production. And um, uh, there are a lot of issues that affect uh, other cutting, cross cutting issues that affect the smallholder farmer. So when there's a funeral, um, and uh, the, this is a uh, funeral incentive which was, uh, brings a lot of degenerated to the, uh, to the family which, which are um, on the IBCF. Currently, uh, just as a, uh, an overflow uh, effect, we have seen, as Kieran has said, uh, more genas are now interested in going to this, uh, based on I many following this approach. And we have uh, currently, um, we had also we have seen also uh, a lot of interest that are coming from financial institutions. Currently, there are a lot of financial institutions that are turned to the banks and the, some other microfinance institutions that are coming. Uh, we have seen the farmers which are on the IBCF being more organized. They are, uh, this is evidenced by the loan payment and the loyalty that is there. Uh, so there are also a pressure that yeah, a lot of farmers are willing to, uh, to, 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 enter, to, join the, the, to join the scheme. Through IC, IBCF, there are improved market efficiencies on the, on the market such as reduced um, asset selling, reduced free, free riders, uh, reduced asset buying. So uh, among the, the farmer and the buyer, there's improved trust. And um, uh, IBCF has also introduced a, a passbook system, which is easy to trace farmers. Uh, in this program, we have seen the following being beneficiaries. The main beneficiary being smallholder farmers. These are resource poor uh, farmers who uh, always have problems to access inputs and to access assured market. Uh, within this, um, within this, the, the scheme, there's also some medium scale farmers. We also, there's also a program, uh, Sprayer, uh, service providers. These are people locally out, uh, identified, trained, who provide spray services uh, to the beneficiaries, but uh, they, they do this at a fee. Uh, because of this arrangement, uh, uh, GINAs are uh, of course, uh, as part of the um, beneficiary input supplies, the insurance company that involved, and because of the increased productivity and uh, production of cotton, we have seen at least there's an uh, improvement, which means um, uh, there's an element of labor uh, uh, employment, so the labor market is also uh, benefiting. COF uh, and Cotton Council indirectly are beneficial because um, the more organized the farmers are, um, the easier it is to link them to, um, to organized institutions uh, and, and to the wedding institutions and, the, and financial service providers. This program is not going on um, without challenges. Um, at times, uh, it's reported that uh, registration is facing instances of double interest. Uh, sometimes uh, those involved uh, do create uh, ghost farmers. Um, again, there's no proper software to capture and manage farmer database. Some farmers, because of the odd habit, will still want to uh, beat the system and uh, still want not to default. Uh, we've got a problem with extension service because government has got few extension workers on the ground. Um, on the part of the GINAs, uh, the GINAs are complaining that uh, because this program is learned as a commercial in nature, and they are going to fix assets, uh, the program has become a bit um, expensive on their part. Uh, currently, we have seen introduction of hybrid seed on the market, um, which is selling at $20 per kg, unlike the, uh, the other varieties which, which are selling at $1.20. So this is uh, raising the uh, uh, input package to be on the higher side. Uh, also, M and E uh, to track the document progress. I think that's a short form. As we go forward, because this program has uh, just benefited a few farmers. Uh, in the first year, uh, 4,000 farmers benefited. Uh, last year, we saw uh, the figures uh, increase to 5,000 farmers. But there, in Malawi, we've got more than 20, more than 250,000 farmers to 300,000 farmers. 
So uh, the starting is good and there's room for improvement. I think as an opportunity, uh, there's room to organize more farmers and strengthen the umbrella institutions. Uh, what we want to say is that farmers should be well organized so that they can engage uh, with the input supply, with the genus uh, on equal basis. Uh, the problem needs to be scaling up. As I say, it is covering just few farmers and few areas. Um, in the cotton growing areas, as the q and have said, we also uh, have same farmers or some farmers growing other crops. So we see this incentive, this project can be also be extended to some other crops like sesame. Uh, there's a room to invest in the loyal farmers to become para extension service providers because of the shortage of the government funded extension service providers. So we, we, we as we are doing with the spraying service provider, we can also identify some loyal farmers, train them so that they can boost the um, uh, extension system. Uh, the project in Malawi um, is being uh, implemented by most and um, uh, one Gina, but uh, we still feel there's a room for uh, to include call for Coral Farmers Association to do the mobilization and organization and registration and the capacity building of the farmer. Coral Council is crucial uh, for the enforcement of some regulations to make the project a success. Otherwise, from Coral Farmers and the farmers themselves, they are very excited. And the, right now, the, the people and uh, the group of farmers who are on this project are really uh, testifying that this project is very, um, this approach is very good. And because uh, it is a win-win situation, and farmers and genus are both, win, are, are both benefiting from this. And as COFA, we strongly recommend that this project should indeed, indeed be um, in testified in Malawi because it's the only way one we see forward where farmers can play as an equal partner to the um, uh, gene companies and other uh, uh, service providers. Thank you for now.